You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. It's a big world out there, and you're just looking for a pat on the back or head. You run around the city, searching for a place to bark, working your tail off with your nose to the ground, sniffing for a few scraps, hoping someone will throw you a bone. You take each lead, collar after collar, hoping one day to take a bite out of success and become the top dog. Fortunately, you come home each day to open arms, open cans, a drink waiting for you, and a comfortable place in front of the TV set. You know you've got it good, really good, because after all, it's a doggy dog world out there. Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with your host, pet expert, and award winning author, Liz Palaika, and this week's co hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Welcome to It's a Doggy Dog World. I'm Liz Palaika, and with me today are Petra Burke and Kate Abbott, my good friends from Kindred Spirits Canine Education Center in Vista, California. Our last show, we talked about some things to think about before you add a dog to your family. Whether you're thinking about adding a third or a fourth or a fifth dog, or whether it'll be your first venture into the dog owning world, which is a different one, by the way. <laughs> but we dog dumb. <laughs> dog dumb. <laughs> we talked about some things that you need to think about, including the cost of a dog. Uh, is every family member going to be happy about having a dog? We want to continue with that discussion uh, in this show. But first, let's take a break for our sponsors, and then we'll continue on with all kinds of good information for you. So hold on. Don't go away. Sit. Stay. It's a doggy dog world. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. That's it. You're madder than a junkyard dog, and you're not going to take it anymore. Your feathers are ruffled, your dander is up, and you've got a definite bone to pick. Join us each week on Pet Peeves, the show that lets you dig through the dirt and unleash your passion for pets. Your host, pet expert and award-winning author, Amy Shojai, will talk about what makes you howl and what hisses you off. Pet Peeves, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Pets are part of the family, and when traveling with your dog, there's only one magazine to include when packing your doggy's duffel bag, and that's Fido Friendly, the travel and lifestyle magazine for you and your dog. Each bi-monthly issue includes hotel, city and state reviews, and doggy destinations to explore with your furry companion. Fido Friendly magazine can be found at Borders, Barnes & Noble, PetSmart, Pet Boutiques, and Fido Friendly hotels nationwide. Or you can go online to subscribe at www.fidofriendly.com. So get traveling with your pet today and leave no dog behind. And remember, Fido Friendly's the only magazine dedicated to the travel lifestyle of man's best friend and the one magazine your dog will thank you for. It's time to start scratching for donations for the Humane Society of Broward County's Walk for the Animals presented by VCA Animal Hospitals. The walk is Saturday, March 1st at Esplanade Park in downtown Fort Lauderdale. You'll need a registration form, so stop by any VCA Animal Hospital, IHOP, the Museum of Discovery and Science, or the Humane Society. This event is also brought to you by Big 1059, Comcast, Purina One, PetLifeRadio.com, Tidy Cats, and The Herald. Call 954-266-6817 or log on to walk the number four theanimals.com for more details. See you there. Let's talk pets on petliferadio.com. We know you're begging for more. So back to It's a Doggy Dog World with your fetching hosts, Liz Palaika, and this week's co-hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Welcome back to It's a Doggy Dog World. I'm Liz Palaika. With me are Petra Burke and Kate Abbott. And we're continuing our discussion that we started in our last podcast about dog ownership and about some things to think about before you bring a dog home. So I think Kate first is going to review our list for us. 
So some of the things we talked about last time were to consider the size of your household, and that could mean the other dogs in the household as well. Um, the size of your home in general, the physical layout. The, whether you have children in the house and whether the dog should be compatible with those children is an important thing to keep in mind. Whether um, there's some senior citizens in your home. There's another good one. <laughs> yes, just this past week I've been dealing with rowdy adolescent large dogs and elderly owners and it's not been a good mix. Um, the size of the dog when it's going to be grown is an important thing to keep in mind as you're looking at those big liquid puppy eyes. <laughs> Bambi and eyes. Bambi <laughs> eyes and whether you want to get an adult or a puppy. There's pros and cons of both of those. Consider the grooming that the breed is going to require. The traits of the breed that could be pluses or minuses for you guys. Whether drooling is a big issue or a non-issue. Big issue with me. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of shedding. Drool is good for your hands. You know that. I, I, don't, saw it. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not one for the drooling. And how come <laughs> Avon hasn't bottled it yet? Yeah, I know they, they, should. they should. When you see those Newfies and Mastiffs shake and all those droplets go every which way, that that's, that's not a selling point for me. <laughs> Some people find that charming. I know, but not me. <laughs> and of course, look at the potential health problems for your breed. Uh, there's no guarantee that your puppy will be healthy healthy or will have those problems, but knowing what to expect and taking any preventative measures that you can. If your breed has a tendency to have bad hips, then looking to see if the parents are OFA certified or pin hip certified. Something along those lines will help um, even out the odds of you getting a good healthy puppy. Right, right. And like you say, there's no guarantees. Patron, I know that. Yeah, with first she, hand, unfortunately. Yeah, with uh, a blind dog and a dog with severe hip dysplasia, but all you can do is try to put the odds in your favor. Well, let's talk about where to get a dog. The politically correct thing to do today, and I'm not one to be politically correct, but the politically <laughs> correct... <laughs> po no. po politically <laughs> correct... Well, I, no, I, I didn't. I, I just had to add that because I figured you guys were gonna. <laughs> is to get a dog from a shelter or a rescue group. To rescue a dog. Yes. A lot of people love the idea of rescuing a dog who would otherwise not have a home. And as long as you understand what you're getting in for with that type of a dog or that type of a situation, that's absolutely fine. Uh, there are, after all, a lot of reasons why a dog can end up in a shelter. And not all of them the dog's fault. And unfortunately, I think the most common, um, well, us being in North County common one is the um, military going overseas sure um, they usually have a big strong dog and now dad's gone and, and mom mom's, can't control and it she's left with a much. baby or yep. she's pregnant or and they're they want to go home to their parents or her parents should, I should say so the dog gets placed in the shelter last yep. time I was at the shelter I saw three beautiful Rottweilers oh just gorgeous just sad just oh gorgeous sad puppy. Yeah. Um, then getting the wrong dog uh, or haven't checked with your landlord or homeowners association, that happens. Unfortunately, divorce happens. <laughs> Luckily, I've always gotten rid of my husband's kept the dogs, <laughs> but that's Mark my story. <laughs> <I know. Yeah. laughs> um, um, when people are uh, collectors, yeah. Oh, hoarders. Yep. When yep. they all of a sudden start taking in too many dogs, and all of a sudden all those dogs end up at the shelter, whether by force or they voluntarily give them up. Mm -hmm. um, puppies, they don't uh, spay their females. Unwanted litters happen. Behavior problems. Oh, my gosh. I think Liz and I years ago went to the shelter and checked it out, and so many were between those adolescence years, those mm -hmm. average 9 to 12 months, and it's like, they're not bad dogs. They're a teenager. They grow up eventually, mm -hmm. but they end up at the shelter. Um, the owners passing away for whatever reason, you know, whether they're elderly or, or whatever, they end up at the shelter. Nobody in the family wants to take them. So unfortunately, there's so many reasons they end up there. And there's some good dogs at the shelter. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you have some bad ones that have come from bad backgrounds or you don't know what abuse had happened mm -hmm. to them. And but I don't think, like we hear all the time, everyone says, my dog's been abused. <laughs> oh my God, every person, 99.9% my dog's been abused. 
I don't really think not, so. Not, not every dog in a shelter's <laughs> been in abusive situations, although some have. Uh, yes. Gina was. Yeah, yeah, and mm -hmm. I'm not, I definitely believe in quote rescuing dogs. Uh, I got Gina from the shelter or from the friends of the shelter. They pulled her out because she had puppies, and uh, well, I remember calling you as a student and saying, "I want to come to class with my dog. I just adopted her from the shelter, and she was abused, and she needs special help." And you went, "Yeah, right." Okay, <laughs> yeah. heard that story before, <laughs> and this time it was true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she did, yep. Yep. but but they're not all abused. They're not all abused. However, I'm not so sure that every dog should be rescued. No, uh, no. Uh, Paige and I have a story about that. A little terrier named Willie. Oh my gosh, that's right. Willie came through class with us, had been adopted from a shelter, was a biter. Yeah. Was not just snapping, was not warning. He was a biter. But it was interesting, remember they said they didn't have that situation at the shelter when they went to visit and, and hands on and stuff is only when they brought him home. And he started to settle into the house. Uh huh. Yeah. And it was getting more and more. Of the and luckily, biting. he was little because he could yes. have caused some tremendous harm. But after working with them for quite a while, mm -hmm. and his new owners tried. They, they tried. really, really tried. Uh, but they had a young kid. But or they, so. had, they were afraid. They, they were had afraid young children, the and they were afraid of the dog. And he was getting more and more serious. We told them to take him back to the shelter to tell them exactly what was going on. Mm -hmm. And then, about a week later, Petra and I were going to the shelter for something else, mm -hmm. and there was Willie up for adoption. Yep. Again, with no yep. warning on his cage card. No warning whatsoever. The couple well. with the golden retriever, not too long ago in our classes, got yeah. into a breed rescue. Yes. They tried very, very hard. Yep. Yes. And um, Buddy. They, yep. he improved tremendously, <clears throat> but... But he was still dangerous. Very unpredictable. Gave him back to breed rescue. And back they put him, back up, yeah. put him up on the website. It's available for adoption again. Yeah. And tried to blame the people who had first adopted him for yes. the problem. Yes. Yeah. And then they found out through research that he had bitten the woman in the foster home. Before they had adopted him. Yes. So yeah. There are cases it's not safe. Yes. Personally, as much as I love the idea of shelter and breed rescue, and I've supported breed rescue with a couple of books over the years, I like to get a, a dog as a puppy. I love puppies. <laughs> I love puppy breath. <laughs> I love raising a puppy. I love seeing that puppy grow up and turning turn into the, the dog that I wish him to be. They don't always turn exactly what you wish them to be. <laughs> but <What? laughs> But, you know, there's that nature versus nurture. But I really enjoy raising a puppy. So for my husband and I, that's been our choice. We have had rescues before, previously, and all our cats are rescues, and almost all our reptiles are rescues. But dogs, I like to get as as puppies. Yeah, you know, I have to agree. I mean, I know I've fallen in love with some of the adult dogs, and I guess if you know where the dog has come from, if you know the situation, um, you know, a, a good friend, a family member couldn't take the dog, but you have been aware and you, you knew the dog since, since puppyhood. Then yeah, it's a that's you know something you could a risk to take because you know mm -hmm. the situation. But we see too many unpredictable behaviors with them, mm -hmm. and I think the toughest one is that honeymoon period. Mm -hmm. The first three months seems they're so good. sweet yeah. and nice, yeah. and then the honeymoon's <laughs> over, and then you see the real dog. <laughs> yep, yep, and and especially doing what we do with our dogs. We have to be able to trust them to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. And a good example, again, is Gina, is how long it took for her to realize that people weren't going to hurt her and she didn't have to react fearfully. She's wonderful now, but it took her a couple of years to get to that point. Sometimes she's a pain in the butt going over and saying, pet me, pet me, pet me. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but that's so wonderful compared to the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> so I think what's what's necessary is Think about what you want from a dog, what your personal philosophy is, whether you w you really want to rescue a dog, whether you want to save a dog from the shelter or an adoption group or a purebred rescue group, or whether you prefer to get a, a puppy from a breeder and raise it as a puppy. 
The one thing I will tell you, flat out, with no qualms, don't buy a puppy from a pet store. Yeah. Oh, Plain yeah. and simple. No. Don't buy no. a puppy from a pet store. These puppies, the vast majority of them come from puppy mills, puppy farms, because a responsible breeder is not going to sell her puppies to a pet store. Mm -hmm. Puppy farms are in the business of producing puppies. They're not in the business of producing quality puppies. And as trainers, we see these puppies come into our classes and uh, their temperament is uncertain. Their physical conformation is often greatly uncertain, yeah. <laughs> and they're almost impossible to house train because they've been in a cage far too long. They've been in a cage all their lives. Overwhelmingly, I would say that most of those that we see are just damaged. They're yes. Just yes. Damaged goods. Yes, yeah. yes. And, and, and like people... I feel sad about that. I don't want to take that damaged good for the next 14 years in my home. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. I had a call from uh, a young woman a couple of weeks ago uh, had seen a silky terrier at a pet store and the puppy was seven months old and she felt that someone needed to save the puppy. Yeah, they needed to save rescue. Yes, <laughs> but she yeah. was going to have to save that puppy to the tune of $1,200. Ouch. Ouch. And I, I told her in no uncertain terms, no, don't get that puppy. Because one, you're not responsible for putting the puppy there, therefore you don't have to save it. And should you be saving that puppy, they should be paying you to take the puppy, not mm -hmm. you buying the puppy. And you buy that puppy and then you leave space in the pet shop for them to start all over exactly. again. Exactly. And I said, and as soon as that puppy has been purchased, they're going to fill that spot again. And a puppy of seven months old who's been in a cage in a pet store since he was a teeny, teeny baby is going to be impossible to house train. Oh yeah. Virtually impossible to house train. Unfortunately, she didn't want to hear that answer and I didn't hear from her again. So I don't know whether she chose to get that puppy and deal with it on her own or to go to another trainer. I don't know. I hope she didn't do that because she's gonna be so disappointed. And we've heard from people who have bought dogs by pet stores because or the kids oh my god mom look it's so cute they get suckered into it they buy the dog then the enormous vet bills afterwards and how many have we heard that don't make it to don't three, live four, a long five life. years yes. old and then mm -hmm. the people come back and say you know what we will never do that mm -hmm. again we'll go to, to a shelter or mm -hmm. to a breeder or something mm -hmm. yep yeah. another red flag in this area at least is um an ad in the local paper or uh, penny saver or rag, and you meet somebody in the parking lot, and they oh, show you just yes, the, the box. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> the and box then they're coming puppies. in from Mexico. Quite often. <laughs> yes, yes. If you don't get a chance to at least meet one of the parents of the puppy, then you're missing a big part of the possible parent uh, personality, as well as looks and behavior mm -hmm. and everything else of the dog. Mm hmm. So let's talk about something a little more positive. Okay, you decide you're going to get your puppy either from a shelter or a rescue group or from a reputable breeder. All three of those people or organizations are gonna ask you some questions. And don't take offense when they ask you questions. You should expect this. In fact, well, if I they don't ask you questions, worry, turn around yes, and walk Yes, I was just gonna say, <laughs> I would be very concerned if they don't. So some of the questions, are pretty common sense. Um, for example, how long have you been act active with this uh, breed? Uh, some experience is good. Um, I think one th thing we always ask our people or when we have our clients is, um, are you familiar with the breed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, it's the first time I've had Newfoundland. Well, okay. <laughs> Do you know about the fur, the hair? You know, the, the drool. First, the drew. <laughs> Moving on, yes. Some other things that they may ask you is, do you have a fenced-in yard? Because they're going to want to make sure that this puppy's going to be contained. They may ask you if you have the financial uh, abilities to take care of this puppy. Mm -hmm. Great Danes eat a lot of food. <laughs> Poodles need a lot of grooming. <laughs> How much time are you going to be able to spend with the puppy? Yes, is is yeah. everyone in the household gone from from six thirty in the morning till six thirty at night? Um, are you willing to take the puppy to training? Mm -hmm. 
So there's a lot of things they may ask, uh, and and answer them honestly. Don't try to tell them what you think they want to hear. But there's some things that you should ask the breeder too. One thing I like is to to see the parents. Mm-hmm. You know, like we said, Liz and I have two wonderful dogs that have uh, health issues. But still, it's nice to see the parents, and then and uh, well, we saw the parents when we went down to get Logan and Bashir, did. and we they did. are knock on wood healthy. 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 <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no one's at the door. <laughs> That's my hearing alert. Um, you may want to find out how long the breeder's been involved with that breed. You know, if it, oh, it's my first litter. You know, a lot of backyard breeders watch out for. Mm. Uh, we hear about that. Well, I bought the dog. And I wanted to get some money back, so I thought I'd breed it. So our first litter, or or so the children can experience the miracle of oh, birth. Yes. I love that one. Yes. Yeah. And then when you can't place the puppies, they experience the miracle of death. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Forget that part. Mm-hmm. And then ask if they have, uh, like we men- or Kate mentioned earlier uh, about um, tests the the health, the OFA of the hips, elbows, getting um, the eyes, eyes. checked. Real important. And just, oh, yeah, we had it done. Not enough. Let me see the paperwork from the, the vet. Um, and a sales contract is so important. I know I uh, had an issue with that, with the, unfortunately, from a reputable breeder. And along the lines with a sales contract, let's talk about co-ownerships. Oh, yes. <laughs> Many times a reputable breeder will offer a dog for sale under what's called a co-ownership. That means the breeder retains half ownership in the dog and you have half ownership in the dog. Usually the breeder will give up her half once the dog has been bred, the male has been used for stud, or the female has produced a litter, uh, or two or three, depending on the original contract. Personally, I've done this I was very uh, lucky in that the breeder I worked with was very nice, but I ended up having to follow through with some things that one, when I first got the dog, I didn't understand, including getting his confirmation championship. I didn't understand how expensive that could potentially be. Cost us a small fortune to get his championship. And he was a nice boy, but- Time and money. Time and money, Mm -hmm. yes, yes. And then, We only used him for breeding a limited number of times, but because my name is easily found in the public, if someone who had a puppy couldn't keep the puppy, they didn't go back to the owner of the bitch, they came to me. And I took puppies back. And I was more than happy to do that after all my dog sired the litter. But that's an added burden because Mm -hmm. then I'm trying to find homes for additional dogs. A friend of ours just went through it with her dog, and we won't name names, (laughs) but it turns out that the dogs uh, from her breeder have reproductive problems. So she went through a lot to get this dog bred and and didn't have puppies until the second litter and then had a very, very small litter Mm -hmm. and... Mama didn't necessarily want to take care of them. <laughs> Not initially. Well, nothing to do with so, that. So be very, very cautious about getting a puppy under this type of an agreement. And be very cautious should the breeder allow you to purchase this puppy only with a co-ownership. Remember, there's a lot of puppies out there. You don't necessarily have to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, and then some questions to ask a, a shelter or a rescue group. Um, and, and you know, not, hopefully they'll tell you the truth, but that's no guarantee. Why is the dog given up, or why was the dog given up? Um, sometimes I think they fluff it to make it sound <laughs> either make you break your heart and get to the bottom of it, and you'll adopt the dog. Um, <laughs> and sometimes the people giving up their dog just flat out lie, yeah, because they feel guilty. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. What background information um, do they have on the dog? Is he spayed, uh, she or he spayed or neutered? Um, vaccinations, are they up to date? Um, does it appear to have any health problems? I mean, do the best you can. Obviously, you, I think anybody could tell an unhealthy from a healthy dog. I mean, check the coat. For the basics. The yeah. eyes, you know, you can pretty much tell if a dog looks sickly or not. Um, maybe if he has had any training. I know we've got Lucky and a couple of people in our recent classes have adopted dogs and they've had some training 
So I'm like, hey, good job. <laughs> it's an advantage to the new owners. Um, and then any signs of aggression, like we had just mentioned earlier, that's that's. Uh, now, that's granted, a scary dogs one. are not going to show their true colors in a shelter situation. the The shy and fearful dogs are going to be in the back of the run, going, "Oh my gosh, what's happened to me?" Um, the extroverts are going to be climbing the the fence, at the gate, trying to get out, going, "Oh, take me home, take me home." Um, and, and they'll all tug at your heartstrings, but you really are not going to see the, the true temperament of the dog in the shelter run. But hopefully some of the volunteers may have taken the dog out for some one-on-one -on -one time, taken him out for a walk, taken him out to the dog park or, or whatever. And perhaps these volunteers can tell you a little bit more about the dog, mm -hmm. the individual dog. And maybe something to ask if they can, um, you know, if it's 24, 48 hours, you bring the dog home and something just is not working, can mm -hmm. we bring it back? Oh, definitely. It's better to do that than all of a sudden you know, kick the dog out the door and you got to stray and all that stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Can I bring the dog back if it doesn't work? We have a shelter in the area that actually requires several visits. And then they also require that at least one of those visits, everybody in the household and any of the dogs in the household also come and visit with the dog in mm -hmm. their large mm -hmm. play area. Mm -hmm. So as much chances as possible in an unnatural environment to get to know the dog, the sure. true colors. Uh-huh. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what? now what happens? You've talked to the breeder. You've talked to the shelter. Um, how do you pick that one dog? Well, there's just a world of possibilities. Trying to narrow it down is so hard. But, um, yeah, I lost my thought. Sorry. <laughs> I went, what? Well, I'll, I'll oh. tell you what. We're going to take a break for our sponsors right now. So hold on. Don't okay. go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> Sit. Stay. It's a doggy dog world. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. session on Pet Life Radio with Teacher's Pet. Learn how to communicate with your pet, train your pet, and see the world from your pet's point of view. You may even learn a few tricks yourself. Teacher's Pet with pet expert and author Sarah Wilson. Only on PetLifeRadio.com. Greetings, human. What planet am I on? Welcome to Pet Planet. Here's a copy of Pet Planet Magazine, Florida's most informative and fun pet resource magazine. It features heartwarming stories and informative articles from local and national pet experts. Excellent. Pet Planet Magazine offers Operation Planet Rescue, helping rescued pets find new homes. And it's available at 500 locations in South and Central Florida and 24-7 on the Internet at PetPlanetMagazine.com. If you're out and about with your pet, you may be featured in paparazzi candid pictures of you and your pet for up-to-date pet friendly events activities and pet related services and products pet planet magazine is your final destination i shall take this magazine home with me back to your home planet no to my condo in boca pet planet magazine check them out at www.petplanetmagazine.com or 352-394-8578 it's out of this world, world. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We know you're begging for more. So back to It's a Doggy Dog World with your fetching hosts, Liz Palaika and this week's co-hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Welcome back to It's a Doggy Dog World. I'm your host, Liz Palaika. With me today are Petra Burke and Kate Abbott. And we're talking, of course, about our favorite subject, dogs. Um, in our last podcast, we talked about some things to think about before you add a dog to your family. Uh, in the first half of this show, we've been talking about uh, where to find a dog, some of the questions you might be asked, some of the questions you might want to ask. And now, let's talk about choosing the one. And yeah. I think we all have a lot of stories about that. Well, you guys have been giving me a little... A uh, hard time lately about picking a new puppy. Yep. Yes, yeah, it's time for you to get a puppy, you said. Yep, yep. And I'm going, not yet. 
but <laughs> but you have kindled so i was watching westminster of course uh-huh. on tv and i'm like oh i like that breed oh i like that breed oh yeah so i'm making my life list okay i'm not sure it's going to be this year but anyway <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to add one this year, and when I get that puppy, you won't be able to stand it. Yeah. <laughs> and if uh, Deb gets her English uh, Shepherd puppy. And, and, and Deborah gets hers. Oh, yeah. We're going to have three puppies in the yard. But see, I'll be a great aunt. I'll get to yeah. play with the puppies and send them home. Me yeah. too. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> but it is kind of fun. As I look at the breeds at Westminster, I think, okay, big, but there's good qualities here. Or mm-hmm. small, short, sure. little, stocky legs, but good qualities there. I think uh-huh. I'm, I'm ready for another tall one, so I don't have to bend over as much. Uh-huh. Um, well, you've got a medium-sized dog. Gina's small for a Roddy, mm-hmm. so she's medium. Walter's small, so yeah. He's not tiny, but he's small. He's yeah. small, yeah. yeah. He's, he's still, you can still hold him on your lap. So, what were some of the breeds? Come well, on, the, come on. But I was thinking about um, uh, a good student who was talking about she had always had large dogs in terms of large golden retrievers or even Irish wolfhounds. But she said she'd reached the age now where she was worried that something happened to her. She wouldn't be able to pick up an Irish setter or, I'm sorry, Irish wolfhound on her own or even a golden retriever on her own. So she wanted to move to a small breed, uh, relatively small. Okay. Uh, she was looking at papillons and corgis, and she was asking me about cockapoos uh-huh. um, for recommendations and information about the breed. And I thought that was really smart. So go out to dog shows mm-hmm. and talk to the people about their breeds, their chosen mm-hmm. breeds. Understand they're going to polish up the facets of the, their jewels that they really enjoy. Oh, of course. Or we've had people call us and ask about breeds they're looking mm-hmm. into, but the behavior portion, the training I, part of it. I all. wish more people would call trainers because... Breeders yes. love their breed. Yes. Yeah. Trainers, veterinarians, vet techs, see mm-hmm. groomers, see the dogs as they really are. Of course, you can always pick up a copy of my book, <laughs> <laughs> The Howl Book of Dogs. Shameless <laughs> plug inserted here. Sh- shameless plug, which just won its category at the Dog Writers Association of bravo, America. Bravo, bravo, bravo. <laughs> it's on Amazon.com. Just click on. Liz Palaika and click on uh, the Howl Book of Dogs. <laughs> cool. And it's H-O-W-E-L-L. Howell is the name of the publisher. Yes, yes. yes. I know that um, my husband and I have had Australian Shepherds for more than 20 years. But because we have had several Aussies with uh, health problems. And Patris had Aussies for many years. And she has... Some Aussies with health problems. Um, my husband and I right now are in the process of looking for a different breed. And we're looking at a rare breed. One that's not registered with the American Kennel Club because, unfortunately, the AKC doesn't do it on purpose. But when a breed gets very popular, many people breed who aren't knowledgeable. And therefore, health problems can escalate. So we're looking at a rare breed. Um it's a little more difficult to find those dogs, but we're not in a hurry, and so we're going to go that route. No, I'm, I'm one of them moving up on the list of my favorites is corgis. I love their little short legs, but that doesn't Pembroke's. fit into my category of being able to. <coughs> I was going to say, yeah, so a Pembroke is not a taller <laughs> I know, dog. Oh, I know, but they're so cute. <laughs> Pembroke is not a taller dog. <laughs> no. no, but on the other hand, I love Irish Wolfhounds. So. <laughs> I love, yeah. I've been in love with Irish Wolfhounds for years, but they just, just don't, don't live, live long, long enough. enough. So. I don't know. I have four dogs. So I'm not even in the market. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> <kidding>. <laughs> I have enough. Here. Talked out here. Now, um, the what to think of when we need to uh, bring in your new dog home. <coughs> That'll Let's be our ready. next podcast. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, anyway, when you choose a dog, there's... The logical, practical aspects of it. Do your research. Ask questions. Read. Do as much research as you can. But there's also that emotional decision, too. Like the way I got Walter. Sure. Somebody plopped him in your arms and said, you got to take him. Thanks, Petra. <laughs> Petra. <laughs> I was wondering if my name was going to pop up. Petra did that with me uh, with Riker, too. Yeah. Uh, the breeder. <laughs> he was the last puppy in the litter. Breeder put him in Petra's arms. Petra walked him over to me and said, here. And he gave me kisses. So I promptly handed him to my husband and said, you make the decision. 
And he went, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and Riker's now at... See, nine, nine years, nine years old. Your nine years you, old. You did something. You went to the reader. You know, you got to say... Uh-huh. And when Patriot's co-workers, puppy dog, had an affair with the dog down <laughs> the street. <laughs> I have no idea of his parentage, but, uh, and what, he separated himself out from the litter when she uh-huh. brought the litter into work? Yep. Yep. And yep. you just said, oh, there's a very confident, forthright dog. And yep. He needs a special owner. <laughs> yep. And there he is. Yeah. Now, Bashir was a little different. Um, I told the breeder what I was looking for in a dog, and then we went down to see the puppies when they were five weeks old. Yeah. And Petra silly person went with my husband and I. <laughs> well, Aussie puppies are so cute. I had to go and that was a mistake. And uh, the breeder, <laughs> when we got down there, the breeder picked up one pu- puppy and handed him to my husband and I and said, this is a puppy that I think will suit you and Paul the best. And he settled down on our laps and that was it. We, we said, yes, we'll take this one when he's nine weeks old. But Petra was watching the puppy who was zooming all over the place, the leader of the pack. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't pick him. He just kept coming to me. I'm like, go away. He kept yeah, coming to me. Thing about and your go ex-husband. away. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, there's a little bit of an emotional factor in there, too. The puppy. Even if you do all the research, if the puppy doesn't tug on your heartstrings, if you don't feel something for that puppy or that dog, uh, then it might not be the right choice. And don't force it. This is an emotional bond that you're going to have with with a family member who's going to be with you for hopefully 14, 15, 16 years. So, not too long after I started classes with you, and uh-huh. all, Ari, you said something along the lines of, you should look at your dog and it should you should smile when you see your dog. Yes. And I remember yes. thinking, who doesn't? But <laughs> I've come to find out some people don't. Yeah. yeah. That's a shame. You, you should. Mm-hmm. You should look at your dog and when he looks back in your eyes, you should smile at him and you should see the love and, ref- and affection bounce back at you. And that's exactly what you should have when you've got a good relationship with a dog. That's why I have four dogs and no husbands. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, I think okay. we're going to close this show. <laughs> that's so it from It's a Doggy Dog World. For our next podcast, we're going to talk about what to do when you bring that new dog home. Which I was so excited to talk about tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but as our shows typically yeah, run <laughs> run over our allotted 30 minutes anyway, <laughs> we'll save that for our next show. <laughs> so think about puppies, think about dogs, do some thinking about what would be the right dog for you, and then tune in next week. That's it from us. <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye. Having a rough day? Longing for the dog days of summer? Think your fun furry friend lives a dog's life? Well, find out everything you're begging to know as Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with pet expert and award-winning author Liz Palaika. Every dog has his day, and you'll find out how to make your dog's day fun and rewarding every week on demand only on PetLifeRadio.com.